Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And here I am on a sunny autumn afternoon. And it is lovely outside, except there's a chill in the air. It's not too bad, but our temperatures are getting down to close to zero, and I'm talking Celsius here, at night, but our forecast highs are varying from 10 to 12. I don't know if it got any higher than that. I'm sure we had 14 or 16 one day because it was really hot but windy. So yeah, we're having typical fall weather here. I'm still hoping for one last hurrah of a nice what we used to call now as kids, Indian summer. And uh, I can hold on for that. So, uh, it's our color and chat day, but before I start the color, I thought I would show you these because I got myself some new glasses. And I don't know if you can see in this light because it's a very strange light I've got in here today, but those are purple. No, they look black unless you get the light on them. They are purple, and then the sides are lime green and black, and the insides are lime green. So these are my reading glasses, otherwise known as my coloring glasses. And we will see if I'll be able to do some of my tiny work without the magnifying glass or if I will still have to do that. Oh, that looks so much better looking at my picture. So as you can tell, I have picked Deborah Muller to color today and this will qualify for my um, spooky cute coloring uh, color along that I am co-hosting with the lovely Samantha Marie Oswald whose link will be down below and I encourage you to go over there and visit her. Stay a while and subscribe. So this is the book Halloween Darlings. I got this this month so I haven't I haven't introduced you to it yet. We'll do that when we have my haul, but in the meantime, I couldn't have it sitting in a pile of books all October. So, got this one out. I looked through it, and I mean, every page appealed to me. But I had to think staying on the cute side, because there were a couple that were definitely more on the creepy side than on the cute side. And then I got to her, and I'm thinking... What exactly is creepy about her? She doesn't, she isn't wearing anything creepy. She doesn't seem to be anywhere creepy. It's night. There's bats in the sky. She likes skull brats in her hair. And other than that, she seems to be pretty normal. So, I thought I would color her as the little goth girl going Halloweening. So that's what we're going to do as we get into it. So, what do I want to do? I'm going to do, oh, I do skin first. Now, that means that she's either got to be very pale, because no self-respecting goth, would have anything but the lightest foundation she could possibly find on her face. So, eggshell pretty much sounds like a good go. Yep. Okay, I'm going to put my protector pad in there and hope I don't need to go anywhere else. <laughs> So, in we go. And we're using Copics today. I've never used my Copics on camera, so if there's something I'm doing wrong, then um, kindly let me know. So 
so I can't talk too much when I do the face because I need to concentrate. You will see that Anne at a colorful life does her skin this way too. She uses a chisel tip though. So I thought it was pretty cool when she sh showed us the way that she had found to do this because it was the way that I was doing it. The only difference I make is sometimes I might take a little sidetrack into an area and not bother with the uh, skipping over. Gosh, did I turn on the recorder? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I have been through the emotions <laughs> this week. Nothing bad has happened. Definitely not. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, I'll tell you about everything. Let's get comfy here. With the skin done. She's got some, I guess those are supposed to be fingernails. Okay, she's got some fingernails that we can paint black. She's going to be an 80s goth girl because that's the only goth I know. If I was one myself for a short period of time. I went through the phase. Okay, so did I miss an ear? Because I have a terrible habit of finishing the skin, putting the skin color away, looking at my picture, and finding an ear. Okay, so no ear, no feet. Nothing to miss. Not much there in the first place. So, um... Yeah, so not much happened at the uh, beginning of this week. It was just, actually it rained a lot. Now should she have, should she, I don't want her to have black hair. Why don't we go with um, a dark gray. Gray 7, that's pretty dark. But maybe she could have it interspersed with kind of like a light one. Or three. Three seems to be the lightest gray I've got. Oh no. No, oh, that's blue violet. Okay, so let's go with those two colors of all. So yeah, not mu not much happened in the uh, in the beginning of the week. It rained a lot, if I remember, and. That is when we went to pick up my new glasses. And she just needed to mold them to make them smaller to fit my face. So that was done as we waited. And then on Thursday was my pain appointment. And that went fine. Just did the regulars. Got some spots that have been bothering me especially. And my arm with the um, tendinosis, it has started hurting again. It's getting into, um, hmm. Now, I don't think her hair is tied into the ribbon, so I'm going to gonna have to keep that separate. Tricky. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, about my tendinosis. Um, so, um, it's been long enough, so he ordered the uh, cortisone sh shot that day, and I will be getting it on my next visit next Thursday so I guess that's three months because that's how long you're supposed to wait I don't know if they're like you know specific it like must be exactly 
or if they have an allowance of, you know, close to. But anyways, I'm just glad I can get that shot because it really debilitates me, like, when I don't have that arm. It's uh, amazing how much one arm comes into play in uh, what you can and can't do. So, yeah, I don't need, I don't need that. And then, so that was Thursday, and then I had another doctor's appointment that I had to go to, so I went to that one, and it was no biggie either. And then it was uh, time to take me home. And it was about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's usually when I get home. And these doctor's visits, my husband was able to take me this time, fortunately, so I didn't have to go through all the fuss and palava of, of the um, buses coming to pick me up and drop me off and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I got home at 2. And um, I needed to film a coloring chat. I had, I had, uh, had some things. I make little notes during the week just of things to say and um, I barely look at it. I just kind of glance over at it when I'm at a kind of like a moment and <laughs> it gives me something to talk about and, and I'm able to kind of like flow again. So yeah, I was going to do that, but I was just absolutely exhausted from the, uh, from the trips. And, um, what did, what am I talking about? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh jeez, no. It is not going to be one of those things, right? What am I talking about? Um, oh Lord, <laughs> stay with me, Lord. Since I was exhausted, and I usually am after getting the needles, I think just getting the shots takes it out of you. Um, okay, so that is, is the boat, and I gotta remember to leave some spaces for the white down here. And all the light gray. So, um, I fell asleep. And around seven o'clock, I think it was, yes, around seven o'clock, my sister, um, calls me, like, messengers me, video message, whatever you call it, I don't know the official name for it, but she did that, and I was asleep, and I answer, but I'm, like, barely, like, well, I'm asleep, what can you expect, and I'm like, hello, and she's like, hi, how are you? Did I wake you? Are you asleep? I'm like, I'm not now. And, uh, so she's like, oh, do you want to talk later? And I look over at the clock, and it's 7 o'clock, and I go, oh, Michelle, it must be like 5 o'clock in the morning there. What are you doing up at this time? And she starts to laugh, and she goes, um, Nick, it's seven o'clock your time in the evening. It's not morning, it's evening. I'm like, what? And I take a minute to listen. And my house was really quiet. I don't know if my husband was at work, and both my husband and my son have been sick, so, you know, if they're not out, they're asleep so I didn't hear anything and I'm just like all discombobulated has that ever happened to you where you just you wake up you think it's morning or night or whatever 
and you're the totally wrong way around. And as soon as someone tells you what it is, you just get... It's just like, oh, just don't want to talk about it. And um, so she said, so do you want to talk or should I call or should we talk later? I said, later. <laughs> and then I hung up and I went back to sleep. So I finally woke up at midnight. <laughs> That's how tired I was. So after waking up at midnight, I did not want to get up and start my day or else I would have a terrible time the next day. So um, I just uh, took all my all my bedtime pills and made sure I got my sleeping pills into me and laid down, turned on YouTube, kind of cuddled up with my laptop and watching, watching YouTube and I fell asleep easily again so that was not a problem. Woke up fine the next day but I didn't get my, I didn't get my coloring chat done. So, that started me thinking, okay, I've got to get it done today. I must. Because this is my schedule. And I said, well, if I do it first thing this morning, then it'll be fine to upload it in the afternoon. And, you know, no problems. Now, I wonder just what shade of dark this dark is. Almost a black. So I don't actually want to use black on her. You know, I think I don't have my black with me. What's this shade? Slate. Well, that could be a good cho choice, but I think it's going to be blue. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, just hang on a sec. It's just right behind me here. I'm going to grab my black. So, I kept telling myself that all day, but it was just one of those days where I was not, not going to work. It just wasn't going to work. I felt lethargic, and I ached kind of all over wasn't in tremendous pain or anything, but it just needed to stay, stay quiet. Sometimes I have a no people day and I just have to tell my um, husband that it's a no people day and he knows what that means. It means that they just all leave me alone. It's not that I just, I don't want to like meet people who knock at the door, or answer the phone. It means I don't want to have any contact with any people that day. And I don't know why I'm like that, but it keeps me mentally stable if I take days like that every now and then. And, you know, sometimes they're few and far between, and sometimes it's like, you know, twice a week. But he knows what that means. And uh, I may run into them as I cross to the bathroom or go get myself something very light to eat. But other than that, I'm incommunicado and they don't, they don't try to talk to me. So we're all happy in our little world. And that's the way I was on Friday, but it just kept nagging at me that I had to do my color and chat because it was supposed to be posted on Friday because of my of my schedule that I'd made and I'd promised myself and then I remembered 
what does my rule say to do if I miss a day? The rules say don't fret, don't get yourself into a bother, forget about it, and go on to the next day. And so I kind of wanted to do that, but I did that last week with my speed color day on the Monday. And I didn't do, I ended up not doing a speed color at all. And so that was on the Monday. I posted on Wednesday, and now here was Friday, and I was going to take another day off. <laughs> that means my three posts a week went down to one. But... I listened to myself and I didn't do it. I said I'm going to get this up by Monday for sure. And that's what I'm doing because today is Sunday and I will have this up on Monday. But one thing that I need to do is work on that schedule because it's not going to work. I cannot film the color and chat between Wednesday and Friday to have it uploaded on Friday because Wednesday I'm concentrating on Wednesday's upload Thursday I get my fills and I'm just I'm just shattered on those days I cannot do anything and it's too much of a rush trying to put something up on Friday that you're filming Friday that you know you may or may not be in the mood to do And on Wednesday, I'll tell you, I was really looking forward to filming my color and chat. I'm taking a drink here. That's why I'm not coloring. I was really looking forward to it. So it's disappointed me that it's taking me this long. But I think what I do is if, my ch if I change my schedule around a little bit to have my color and chats on Mondays. Because that will always give me the whole weekend to work on it. So, and that is doable. Keep Wednesdays the way they are for um, introducing content to you. Um, whether that be book hauls or swatching or um, just anything coloring relating. I've been doing stuff for that day and having no problem whatsoever. And then Fridays can be my speed color and I'm going to do those for a little while because I'm having fun with uh, how they're turning out and they're actually getting a lot of hits so that's um somebody out there is enjoying them I'm going to keep them being mystery pictures though because don't enjoy watching someone just color like straight coloring well I mean it doesn't have to be straight coloring it can be you know it can be like awesome coloring with blending and you know all sorts of stuff but I don't really enjoy watching a speed color of that I like watching speed colors of the mystery pictures and watching it just take form on the page so I'm gonna do that on Friday and I think that that should leave me not feeling rushed to get my three things up so that's the new schedule in case anyone is even interested in the schedule that I'm doing. So anyways, she is going to be one of those goth girls who likes pastels. So why don't we put some peach, oh, pale cherry pink. That might be too pale. Let's have a look. Yeah, that is. I want something more pinky pink. This one, dark pink, big difference. Yeah, okay, not exactly pastel, but she is my goth girl. It, you know, as I'm sitting here looking at the black, oh no, yeah, the black that I put in her, that I put in her hair, it, I can see the blue in it. Even though black isn't a color, I'm seeing blue in it here. Hmm, very strange. Yes, we also picked up my glasses on one of those days. Yes. 
So, tell me your thoughts on my new scheduling. Because the thing that my problem is, is that my schedule and my rules all have built into it that if I don't do it, don't stress, just skip it and move on. Continue with the rest of the schedule. And my problem is, I can't do that. It kills me. It literally kills me to do that. That's the problem. That's my problem that I have to fix, not the schedule's problem. It has that built in backup. But anyways, let me know what you think of what I said. And another thing that I've got going is um, I have a poll going over on my community board if you haven't uh, seen it already. And the topic is flip throughs. Now, um, I've had a couple of people tell me they don't like the music in my videos. And I know people who put music in their videos get those comments uh, quite, you know, sometimes too. Um, and then there's people like Mo Mimo who basically just does flip throughs and once a month, um, a haul of books and her flips are totally music and she gets awesome views on hers. I'm sure she's probably had complaints of people, you know, wishing she'd talk too. Now, I haven't really gotten complaints because nobody's been nobody's been mean or said, you know, I'm not watching your channel because of it. They're saying, you know, I watched it anyways and thanks type of thing. But um, I've act, I had actually been thinking before I got the last one. I had been thinking if I should change to the people one because I've been looking at some the people one, the talking one, oh jeez, um, at the talking ones, and it, it seems to be arbitrary, some of them get, get big hits, and some of them get little hits, even if they're by big, by big YouTubers, so, I mean, this is all just in my thinking, but, I think that if you're going to talk, you need to keep it fairly short because people don't want to invest a lot of time in you just showing them a book. So my, my, um, my poll right now is, is, uh, weighted very, very heavily on no music. So if you haven't voted already, go on over there and um, let me know what your opinion is on music or no music. The reason I do mine the way I do do them is that I don't like talking flip throughs. Um, it really bothers me in a flip through when a person tells you what everything is on the page. You know, if somebody said, oh, well, here's, here's a girl with skeletons in, in her ribbons walking down the road carrying a trick-or-treat bag and, you know, oh, look at those lovely owls sitting on three pumpkins and the moon smiling above. You know, <laughs> I am not in no way imitating or making fun of anybody. It's just, it's just, you know, I'm over-exaggerating here, but, but th that I don't like that. I want to see the pictures in a, in a book before I buy it. And so, you know, that, that's the way, you know, I could be on Amazon and this book looks great. It's got a couple of, it's got a few really good reviews, but there's not one single picture of the inside. And I have got to the point where I am not going to buy any coloring book that I haven't seen the inside of. Unless, uh, there's a couple of cases where I will, but we don't need to get into that. Um, so, you know, I could be, run, I could, you know, have my, 
my uh, cart open, you know, I'm getting ready to pay, and I run over here, and I need to find a flip of a book, and I find it, and it's 12 minutes long, and the person is talking through it, and, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm in a hurry, I want to see the pictures, is it good, you know, and, um, so that's why I do it the way I do, I, the beginning I give you I give you some information you know the pertinent information that you want to know about the book the type of paper it's on whether it's perforated is it double-sided single-sided uh, what's the book made out of who's you know just the kind of questions that we all want to know and then I get on with the flip and music and I don't think there's anybody who I haven't seen anybody do it the way that I've been doing but, um, yeah, I guess there, there's something to be said for all ways. And, um, I'm open to doing it as, um, as we stated there. Like, I, I have no problem of talking through. It'll be my kind of talking through, and I hope you'll enjoy that. And if that's what my vote, which it seems like it's going to... <laughs> If that's what the vote on my poll pulls out at the end, then that is what I'm going to do, and I'll do it for I'll do it for some time, and I'll check my analytics. If if my watching time on the talkies goes way down to what my watch time was on the music ones, I'll have to I'll have to go back because. Um, I need that watch time, but if they're if they're just the same or if my watch time goes up, well, then I will certainly keep them that way. So this shall be very interesting. The last poll I had, you guys were really um, were really kind with me and really good. You basically had 50-50 on the options that I gave you and then and then the rest of the people all all clicked I don't care do it do what you want so um the one of the choices won out by like about three percent and since it had told me to do what I want I chose the winner and changed the way I did do my hauls and I'm glad because, you know, that ultimate was what I wanted to do. And I do. I do a big haul at the end of the month now. And it has turned out to be a real big winner. It gets um, huge watch time and clicks. So it's obviously something that everybody likes. So if you haven't been over to the poll, folks, go on over. I was going to let it run until the end of the month, but with the numbers of people voting in it, um, I may just let it go till the end of this week and close it. Because I want it to get a, I want it to get a good um, reaction until I had enough people vote. You know, you can't say, oh, I'm going to end this in a week, and then in a week you've had two responses to your poll. Well, that's not enough to make a decision. So, now what color looks nice with pink? Because I want to do that little, shall we say, kind of like Victorian brooch thing up there. That color. What goes with, what goes well with pink? Not exactly a pink and purple girl. Something a little out of the ordinary. Pink and teal? No, I like that. Okay, we'll investigate my teals. Oh, I need another set. I have, I think I'm sure I've told you that I have dry mouth syndrome. I have to use a special um, toothpaste and um, mouth rinse because 
it's uh, got kind of a, well, it's got a little bit of some kind of medication in it, but it also has um, a gel in it, which keeps me salivating, because my problem is, is that I lose my saliva, and not only is that uncomfortable with, when, you know, awake during the day and your tongue starts sticking to the roof of your mouth, but, um, yeah, it's not good on the enamel on your teeth to have a dry mouth. Okay, maybe that one. I don't like that one. Okay, let's see if I, I think this is going to blue. Oh no, that's really quite teal, but it's bright. Okay, you know what? First of all, let's see if I have a brighter pink than the one that I'm using because I wanted that for the skeletons. I love pink skeletons. Whoa, yeah, that's like fluorescent almost. It is cerise. Okay, that's what color you guys get to be. Woohoo! Yes. So then on Friday, I'm pretty sure in my last color and chat. I told you guys that I had been turned down for the wheelchair from the one organization that went through the government and they turned me down because I didn't need the wheelchair for use in the house. But the lady who came out to see me had told us about this place. Um, it's called For the Needy, Not the Greedy. And it is a humongous, like it's, it's part of a, it's part of a warehouse and it is humongous. They have all sorts of aids for the, um, disabled and, you know, from small things to big things and, and what have you and everything. But they have a huge selection of, um, of wheelchairs and the prices are like, downright robbery they're so ch they're so cheap so um we went in there and that this was last week we went in there and talked to her and she told us how it worked and all that sort of things and it's no big deal it's just like a store you walk in you buy you walk out and the wheelchairs are all ordered in in size so except for the children's ones which is really sad to look at they're at the very back because you know they don't want to be making everybody sad by showing them the showing them the uh children of one first and just hang on a second i need to get my blender because i've got some green like pink i hate that Now, it doesn't matter which which blender you use. I'm using up a, t a touch new one that I have. And um, I'll just tell you, in case you didn't know, and I'll uh, zoom you in here so you can have a look at what happens. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I guess I should have had you kind of further zoomed in as it was. I'll fix that with editing. But... Do you see right here where the black is bled into the light gray? Well, your blender is actually an eraser. Doesn't work like other ones. You have to be careful not to get the paper too wet. So you might have to do it in two or three spots, which I will here because I'm pushing the color further out. And then you can do that on your edges where you've where you've gone outside the lines. Now don't do anything there until it's dried. And then when it's dried, you might need to go back in with the blender to tidy it up, or you can just go back over it with the colors that you need. So let's zoom you, whoops, 
move you out and I will try and keep you on screen. So we went to do that and they did not have any chairs my size. I happen to be a big beautiful woman <laughs> as they say these days and there is lots of me to love but unfortunately it makes it harder to find things your size so yeah they do have chairs they go way up to you know ones that would fit more than one of me in them so it's not like I'm the biggest of the biggest chairs that they make or anything but it's the next size up from the standard one I don't fit in the standard one so they didn't have any that day but the lady told us she said look you know I've had three of those sized chairs come in this week and all three went out this week and she says that doesn't always happen we never know what's gonna happen because it's all donations that we get and you know nothing can come in or we can just be bombarded with stuff or it's just a slow trickle of some stuff coming in day by day by day but you know we've always got something so um, she said we could call so that you know we wouldn't have to make the drive down there just to look and be disappointed so we did that and on Wednesday uh, my hubby called and no didn't have anything on a Thursday my hubby called and she said yes I've had three come in today and she gave the three sizes they they were two of them were the same size which were big ones that would big ones that would one well the size would have been too big for me and the other one was right on my size so you know we're driving down there and thinking you know I don't want one that's exactly my size because then I'm like you know plunked in there and and can't can't move around I would like to have a little bit of space so that I can put my purse there or my shopping bag excuse me drink so anyways we walked in and we said we were looking for the wheelchairs that were you know, we, we gave her the size and up and she said oh, okay yeah one there's one right here and she goes uh, that's gonna be too big and uh, so I I said well let's try and I sat in it and it was really deep too so it went really far back and well I don't know if anybody ever watched big comfy couch but I looked like the girl sitting in that huge chair you know my 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 toes just barely dangled over the edge of the seat and it was humongous I mean my husband could have sat in there with me and we would have been perfectly co comfortable I'm going in the other one is that size and she says she says well that's what it says and so we walk up a little further and we find the one that's exactly my size and I go to sit in it and I'm like no if I if I go any further I'm I'm just gonna be wedged in there and I have my um, piriformance muscle syndrome and that makes the skin on on my like my hip and upper thigh is very very sensitive so just to touch it it like hurts with pain so I didn't want to sit in there and uh, we went well we might as well might as well look at the other one you know we're feeling kind of kind of like well today's not going to be the day and uh, she pointed it out where it was. It was folded up. We hadn't seen it. But we went closer to it. And as as we saw it, we could tell that it was it was a big one just being folded up. And then um, Heavy got it uh, unfolded. And I'm like, that's nowhere near the size of the first one. Is it the same size? So we look on it and the ticket says, yeah, it says it's the same size. So I sit in it and I fit in it perfectly and there's this just enough room down the side that I could put my purse or I could, could put a couple bags of you know going out shopping down the side there and I'm like 
wow, this fits. And um, so, you know, we're looking it over and everything. And the thing had hardly ever been used. The tires on it were not worn. And if that thing had been used, it was not used outside. And um, it was just the chrome was perfectly chrome. There was no rust or, you know, miscoloration. All the plastic on the handles and on the other part pieces were was solid. There was nothing broken off or anything like that. And um, so, yeah, the um, the feet, the feet, the swingy feet things that you put your feet, feet in weren't on it. So we kind of looked around and uh, there was a bag and that had in it. Then the only thing the only thing that uh, it didn't have was like an actual seat it to put in, like the cushion to put in the chair. And so I was talking to her and I said, so is there anything left for us to do? Like, is this ready to go out the door and use or is do we need to do something? And she goes, no, it's ready to go. And I said, um, I said, well, what, what about the seat? She goes, oh, I'll get one of those for you. And she goes, she goes running off to the back and, and she comes out with this like perfectly new looking seat and she puts the cushion in there and I sit down and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> and we bought it and could, listen to this. This, I mean, this is Canadian dollars. It cost us 175 Canadian dollars. So that's probably like 125 American, something like that, and it's a perfectly, you know, I'm not saying it's new because it isn't, it's used, but you can't tell. It looks really nice, and so that was a real pleasure. Oh, I'm not coloring. I was looking for the color. Oh, the turquoise, what happened to it? Here it is. Just afraid that I'm going to mess things up by going in with this deep color, but I love it. I love, love, love that color. Just need to get, make sure I have enough black with this in here. Okay, so this couldn't have happened at a better time because that day I had been feeling really, really anxious because we were going to the Bishop's Gala. And I mentioned this to you before, I know, in one of my, probably a couple of my videos, that I was so anxious to go into this thing. Because we used to go to it, like, you know, when I was more fit, and my favorite thing to do is dancing. And, you know, it's a shame that I can't do that anymore. But, um, I think I'm going to fill the middle in there with uh, white paint, probably from a Posca. And, oh, or I could use my silver chrome. No, it doesn't want to be chrome. It wants to be white pearl. And, um, yeah, so haven't exactly been myself because of it. You know, it's been two weeks that I've had to get used to it, so that's, you know, a good time for me. And, you know, Hubby had said that it would do me good to get out and get dressed up, because that's the sort of thing I used to like to do. And I just haven't had anything to do it, and I don't really want to, and such and such. But we got this wheelchair, and I suddenly... Suddenly, my my um, feelings suddenly kind of like popped back up because I was thinking, well, now I'll be able to go in a wheelchair. I'll be able to. I won't. I won't be hobbling on a walker or or a cane to like get to the bathroom. And you know, that's the that's that's the thing I was worrying about the most. Didn't want to, you know have to hobble with my chain, up uh, my chain, my cane, <laughs> yeah, my chains, I like to hang them all over me, get out of my way, I got these big chains, <laughs> it's 
so yeah um my cane you know i didn't want to be hobbling all over there with this big cane and uh worse even still <laughs> that i'd be hobbling around with the walker which uh that's not my favorite thing i have a i have kind of a donated uh walker right now it doesn't it doesn't quite fit it doesn't really fit me the the length of it the height of it fits me but my butt's too big to fit in the seat comfortably so I hate using it of course and um you know that was that was another thing that was making me that was making me anxious is having to be like that but now I had the wheelchair, so I felt so much more comfortable that. So, you know, I was, I was, um, prepared for, uh, Saturday, which was yesterday. <laughs> wow, we're, we're to yesterday already. So, yesterday was the big day, and I woke up in the morning, and I thought I was gonna die. I, I scurried off some message to my sister about, I'm about being so so anxious right now that I was gonna you know die and and that this was the end and I loved her and <laughs> I don't know what it said but I did did know I told her I was gonna die from anxiety and that's how I felt so she texted me back relax take your lorazepam lay down you know, I had plenty of hours before we were, before we had to get ready. This was like, you know, early in the morning. And, um, let's make sure I, well, that's the deep pink. Put that over there out of my way. And, uh, oh, I say ah uh, so much as I'm trying to think because it's very hard for me to be choosing the colors and picking the colors and coloring at the same time keeping up a flow of talk. So when my brain is thinking about picking up a crayon and a, a marker and stuff, then I, my voice starts going, uh, uh. <laughs> I should just keep it quiet. It would sound better. So I was just like near sick with anxiety it was really really bad and usually I don't get anxiety because of things because I do have just like um general um anxiety which which just pops up I mean I can be sitting there um the first times that the first times that I ever really noticed it um when I first started uh, therapy was that I'd be sitting watching TV knitting you know watching a show on TV that I liked you know nestled in my little corner that I did my knitting in and I love to knit I always have I always will and then all of a sudden I got overcome by anxiety so but this time yes this was specific it was my social anxiety rearing its ugly head and just the thought of well it's hard to explain if if you haven't experienced it yourself it, it really is hard to explain so it's a combination of things it's not just the you know well being scared of of the people and and them talking to you and that it's like you know being in a room full of strangers and um and then the it's it's the room the room full of people like i guess this is where i become extra sensory and i hear the noises in the room i can hear the the clinks of the ice in the water i can hear the cutlery being put on plates I can hear the waitresses and waiters murmuring to the people. I, I hear the chatter of the conversation. I can hear the whir of the fans on the ceiling. It's, it's all this sound. And in amongst it, 
I'm at a table where possibly three different conversations are going on, one possibly aimed at me. And it's really hard for me to, um, to concentrate on the conversation that's being had with me with all of that other stuff going on and it, it just makes your anxiety go go up and up and so I was being anxious about how I was how I would be anxious when I got there okay, we got the blackout let's do her let's do her nails it was an 80s goth girl would have died without black nails and black lips. So I'm going to use a gel pen to give her black glittery lips and I'll use a gel pen to do her eyes too. They'll be black with a little bit of color on the top. Of course this is not an 80s goth girl because we did not wear anything but black. Black from head to foot and I tell you the importance of having black boots oh was just was just like one of the most important things ever was to have the black boots okay now i'm going back up here and i i'm not zooming in but this is white and it's just got a little bit of um discoloration as it goes into the color and where I did outside of the lines that's gone so all I need to do is take my hair color and go back over that and kind of get into where the color started before and go over you know what I'm gonna do the whole strand again so that spots not marked out Okay, let's go back over it again. So it's got a double layer too. And there you go. So that's how you can erase alcohol marker. And that works with Bix and Sharpies too. Just make sure you have an alcohol blender. Okay, so um, how are we doing? Oh, we've gone on to the uh, second clip. So I guess I might as well tell you how the gal went. And then we can uh, we can close up here, and we'll have done quite a lot actually. Okay, so what color should our moon be? There's not a lot of gray in here, but what other color is the moon? suppose it could do I have a really pale oh yeah here is a very pale yellow he is very pale yellow is this Y G O O don't think I have I don't think there's a triple O no no okay so I'm mean, gonna use very pale yellow and then we're gonna do gray craters on there So, we went to, we went to the Gala, which was in the next city. Hubby had to, had to uh, Google where exactly it was, because we'd been, and, well, like I said, we've been to the Gala a couple of times, but um, it was held at a different place, and so this place we had been to once before but it was a long time ago and um yeah so we got there no no problem and uh went in everybody was um seated together with their um with their organization or their group or whatever if you were just single people you'd be you'd be put together but there weren't really many of that. So um, my husband is a Knight of Columbus. So we sat with his with his group um, or his branch or whatever they're called. And um, he hasn't been in a very long time, like throughout the whole summer, maybe even longer because of his uh, 
all over the place work schedule. So, you know, he didn't know if there'd be anyone he knew there. And there are a lot of elderly people in men in it compared to the younger generation. So yeah, we got there. Uh, w there was two tables set aside for us and one had several people at it already and, and John didn't recognize any of them. And um, so we went to the other table which made us the first <laughs> people sitting at it. Was this my lightest gray? Yes, it is. So we sat down and a few more people came to sit down with us and as introductions were made and stuff, he found out he knew, he knew the three gentlemen that were at the table. Two of them were older than him and the other couple was um, younger than us. So, um, you know, basically we're a, we're a 50s couple. <laughs> I'm very, very close to the 50 part of it, and he's closer to the 60 part of it. <laughs> Let's just get that straight. So, um, yeah, so the older couples were, you know, 60s-ish, and the younger couple looked like, well, they were in their 40s for sure. And um, I was sat next to the um, 40s lady, and she was, she was, um, she was really pretty, nicely dressed, and red dress, and, and everything. And, um, and, you know, we all started talking, and, you know, so one guy didn't realize who John was, and then he found out, and, you know, he came over and had a good talk with him, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was really glad for him that uh, he, that he, that people that he knew, because, um, well, he, obviously he doesn't go out for me time very much because of all his working, but, um, yeah, so this was kind of definitely socializing for him and I get along with anybody who's like not out there in some <laughs> in some way <laughs> you know I'm not gonna say what I consider out there because one of you may be what I would consider out there and you know we get along just fine here on the internet and uh yeah so yeah, so I basically talked to the to the lady next to me, and sometimes the men who were talking to John would direct a question to me or say something to me. So that was very comfortable and everything, and the meal was really good. Um, it was a, like, this is a big event. It says black tie on the card, but we've been to several, I'll say, black tie affairs and believe me it's nobody pays attention to what that means anymore the women all wear gowns you know dresses that go past their knees at least anyways and you know some of them are like you know just beauties and and beautiful and some of them are kind of like you know well you know, didn't, didn't really get themselves dressed up for the occasion, and, um, and the men, oh my god, some are in tux, um, the men who are in the Knights of Columbus were in their uniforms, if they're a fourth rank, my husband's a third rank, he won't become a fourth one because of the, because of the uniform. Uh, he thinks it's silly and he's not going to wear one. And, um, then there was, uh, then there was men who, who were just like in a black suit and tie and others who were just like in sports coats and that would have been my husband's category and a tie. And then you had the people who thought they could just go anywhere in uh, jeans and a t-shirt. I mean, I just think that is so, so disrespectful, you know. You're going to an event which is to honor the bishop's charities. All the money made from the event is going, um, is going to his charities, but, um, 
that that night in particular the uh, money was going to a children's home and um, yeah and you know you're gonna be with the bishop and and a lot of um, you know the religious and the priests and it says black tie people are gonna be dressed up and what do you do you throw on your jeans and your t-shirt like I mean that that's n that's not not even an effort should we put her on the yellow brick road <laughs> what do you think should she be on the yellow brick road let's put a green pumpkin here instead of an orange one I'm always doing orange pumpkins, but I need to have a nice color of green. I don't think they'll have a green called pumpkin. Apple green? Will apple green suit our pumpkin? Mm, I expect it to be a little more dark. What's this one? Mm, grayish olive. Yeah, that's one of the one I think of for green pumpkin. It's not quite ripe yet. Yeah, I gotta say that's one of my pet peeves. People not dressing for the occasion. I mean, I don't expect people nowadays to get dressed up in tuxes. Nobody, people used to own them because they would go to these events, but these events are few and far between for the average person like us, you know, like we're not we're not wealthy, we're not even middle class, you know, but occasionally we get to, we get to go to these things, and, um, so, you know, and nobody's going to rent a tux for this kind of thing, so you do the next best, right, you, if you've got the money, and you don't have anything, go out and buy yourself a nice suit, if you don't, and you have to do with what you've got at home, Find the nicest outfit that you have, and if you're a man, put on a tie. You can go to the thrift store and get a tie for 50 cents. You know, the thrift stores have tons of ties, believe me. I know, I've looked at them. I've bought a few for my husband because I like to find them. Um, like to find like fancy retro ones for him and you know that's what you do it's really no problem with women except you know don't go to a don't go to a black tie affair dressed like a skank you know with your with your the length of your dress showing as the bottom of your butt cheeks and your cleavage down to your waist it's just you know i mean some people come like that oh and you can't enforce it anymore and when i was in my 20s my late teens we would go to places that it said tie and if you walked in the door and you didn't have a tie well they had a whole they had a whole drawer full of uh those press-on ties. <laughs> there you go. Got one. Okay, so there's not a heck of a lot to color in here that I don't need my gel pens for. So, um, is this going to be grass or fire? And then what would this be? It's awfully jaggedy grass. I kind of, th I kind of think I want it to be fire. And then it's like, makes it a little bit more creepy, doesn't it? Alright, so let's get an orange fire color. Okay, simply called orange. Eh, I want an orange red. I don't really have any in this like, apricot. That's not going to be orange red. Alright, what reds have I got? Oh, lipstick orange. Don't I have this over there? Well, that's a pretty good color for fire. Am I on screen? Yeah. Now, 
Okay, so I don't know. I've, I'm all talked out. That was what happened to me this week. When I'm finished this, I think I'm going to call my sister and tell her how it went last night. So I haven't really done anything this morning. I did sleep in late. And, uh... Had... What, two cups of coffee? Oh my goodness, this is just bleeding like crazy for those spots. I need to, okay, first of all, I need to tidy this up a bit. It's just out of the lines so badly, especially here. Alright, so let's hold this so that it's just barely touching the bleed. There we go. Yeah, so it's a nice day. My, my husband has gone to work as usual and he'll be gone for the day. The son's in his room asleep as usual. But he'll be back to school tomorrow. Sure I've told you he's taking an upgrading course. And he seems to be enjoying it just fine. Plus, this week he has to go, um, well, he was, um, well, he's being helped with a cup by a couple of, um, employment agencies, like, with the government, and they're working in tandem with him. Uh, you know, they're the ones who sent him on the first aid course, and they also sent him on the um, food server, or food server and food handler certificate. And um, they've come to the decision that he isn't, he isn't work, he isn't ready yet to work for somebody. So they've uh, they've decided to put him into volunteer and um, they've given him a volunteer position at the at our local food bank which is called Project Share and um, so on Monday after school if uh, times work out with my husband's work and whatever if not as soon as possible they will be going up there and he has to, you know, give all his information and then they're going to pick his, um, his hours because he is going to be working two, two, was it two, three hour or two, four hour shifts a week. So, I think, yeah, so that's what he's going to do. And I have just a little bit left to do, which I'm going to do off screen. Um, I think I'll probably just go with the traditional graystone uh, path there. This, I don't know what it's going to be, so I guess we'll just do a grass green. I'm going to color the sky. Um, has those bats out in the moon, so it's got to be dark. I won't go with black, though. And I'll probably choose um, lighter than a 7 for the gray. Probably a 5. And then I'll outline the, the clouds with white Posca. 
I'll do her her eyes and her eye makeup and her black lipstick with glitter pens and I'll use the Posca to kind of fill in that oh I said pearl before but I'm thinking opal fill in that opal there yeah so I'm not too sure if I'm going to color her cuffs or not but yeah so there we go that is our goth trick-or-treat girl and I would like to thank you for spending your time with me if you made it this far. Um, I am really enjoying doing these color and chats now. I've definitely become more comfortable and more at ease. And uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, sent me such such nice, wonderful comments on how I was doing with the color and chats last time when I had mentioned my <laughs> nervousness over them and uh, it really means a lot to me to to have people in the in the community reach out to me like that and uh, yeah it, it means a lot I have to say I, I feel like I'm a member of the community now and I've been on YouTube for not booktubing but and doing other things for quite some time. I've uh, deleted a, lots of lots of videos as I've moved from one community to another or whatever. But I've never felt like I belonged anywhere, and I think that's what I was looking for: was a uh, community that felt like a family that I could belong to and um, you know contribute to, and um, also. Um, feel like um, that people yeah, I don't I don't know what to say <laughs> I don't want to say anything it sounds like you know but just that you know a two-way two-way thing in the community and I feel really good about the coloring community I think it's the I think it's the best one that uh, I've found here on YouTube anyways and enough of that <laughs> So I will sign off in my usual way. In the meantime, until next time, bye-bye.